Hello friends, in this video I'm going to show you how to add a Greek keyboard to your Apple computer. So whether you want to add some Greek to your PowerPoint slides or maybe a paper that you're writing or just something else, you'll have that ease and ability. Copy and paste just doesn't always do it. So that's why I think it's helpful to have the Greek keyboard. Now I've broken this down into four steps and the whole process is very simple and straightforward. I also have one primo bonus tip at the end for how to use the keyboard most effectively. I think this really, really helps. So I'm JC Schroeder and this is Bite Size Seminary. I've got my computer here, let's dive in. So as we look at the computer here, just one thing you need to know, it's an Apple computer. I'm working on Mac OS 13.4. So depending on when you watch this or what you have on your Apple computer, it may look slightly different but the process is gonna be essentially the same. There's nothing to download, it's all built into the Mac OS. So the first thing that you're going to do is that you're going to open your system preferences and click on keyboard. So you can go up to the little Apple, hit system settings, and that's gonna pop up. Notice this, and I'm going to scroll down all the way to keyboard down here. Now, that's step one. Now. Step two is gonna to go to this text input section and under input sources, we're going to click on the edit button. So I'm gonna click on that edit button. And you can see that I've already added the Greek keyboard. But what we're gonna do, I'm going to unadd this. I'm gonna hit the minus button. So it got rid of it. And now we're gonna go down here. This is the step that you need to take. This is step three. You wanna hit the plus button here and you're going to search for Greek, either it might pop up already, or you can search down here, Greek, helps if you spell correctly, Greek, and then here's the key now that you need for this section. There are two Greek keyboards. You have the standard Greek, if you were speaking or writing in modern Greek, and then there's the polytonic Greek, which also is used in Greece apparently, but is also what we want to use for using ancient Greek, Koine Greek, New Testament Greek, for biblical studies, this is the one that we want to use. So we're gonna click on Greek polytonic. Now the reason for the re why you want the polytonic is it's going to give you all of the accents, breathing marks that we're going to need in New Testament studies or even if you're doing say Septuagint studies or something like that. So we're gonna click the add button and now we have just added the Greek keyboard to our normal system. So we see here, we've got Greek polytonic. So now we can hit done. So step four is to actually do the switching to the Greek keyboard from the standard keyboard that you have as your default on your computer. The way you're going to do that, I believe this is standard on Apple, is the globe key. You can change this, you can use different keys to set up whatever you want. I use some slightly different ones, but the default is the globe key. So notice this globe key down here and then you can change import sources. So as I hit that, notice I can switch between my standard Greek, polytonic, biblical Hebrew keyboard, and my standard English keyboard that I have as default. Now, one bonus pro tip in this is knowing which keyboard that you're actually in. So if you notice up here on the toolbar, it has this alpha, or this, not this alpha, it has this a, and if I switch to my Greek keyboard, it switches to a lambda. And that's really helpful to have, I find, to know just by visualization, there is, I'm in the Greek keyboard, I need to switch to English or vice versa. The way you can do that is we go back to the text input section under input sources and we click edit. And very top of this, it says the show input menu in menu bar. So if we toggle it off, it disappears. If we toggle it on, it reappears. Super helpful. Let's hit done. Now that's not your bonus pro tip. Here's the bonus tip for how to use the Greek keyboard most effectively. Um, it, be, it can be kind of difficult to know which keys on the keyboard, because you don't have the Greek on the physical keyboard, which keys give you which letters or which accents or breathing marks. So a great way to learn how to do this is to go up to your toolbar under the Lambda that we've already seen, click on that, and we hit Show Keyboard Viewer. This will give us a virtual presentation 
of the Greek keyboard. So notice we have our alpha, which is mapped to our A, uh, our sigma, which is matched to our S. So most of these are pretty similar to the English keyboard that you already have. There's some differences like the eta matches to your H, the upsilon matches to the Y. So there's some slight differences. Now notice, this is also super cool, is that if you hit the shift key, you can see how the different forms will change. You can see here's my diaresis, here's my rough breathing mark, whereas here's my smooth breathing mark. And then you can kind of just play around with this by hitting the control key, uh, which really doesn't do anything. The option key gives you a whole lot more if you want to do say a Yoda subscript or something else, uh, as long as with switching, without switching your actual keyboard, you can switch in English by holding the, the command uh, Apple key. So you can kind of play around with that. That makes things, using this little virtual presentation makes things so much easier. And like, where was that one key? You don't have to try to finagle all around. You can kind of just see there it is. That's how I get it. So hopefully that was helpful to you um, as you might include some Greek in your PowerPoint slides, your paper, or what have you. Um, hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.